Hey Resonators, so today I have an exciting video for you of three of the top MIBA host stories of the year. Guys, I read some of these stories a while back, but I never got to put my opinion on them. So you know me, I gotta tell you guys my opinion. So if you're interested in some crazy stories, make sure that you stay tuned. Also during the video, I will be using one of my newest molds, guys. It's this skull jewelry container slash candy dish. And guys, I am literally obsessed with this mold. I wish I would have used it sooner, but anyways, here here we are so make sure that you stay till the end if you want to see the final results okay guys so story number one is called am i the a-hole for uninviting my transgender sister to my wedding now for some background i have a trans sister that came out to us about a year ago now she's been on hormones for years but she hid it from us until she moved out into her own place she hid it because my parents are known conservatives and are extremely transphobic as a result, there was a huge fight and a bunch of my family, including my parents, have completely disowned her. Now, I like to think that I've been pretty supportive of her so far, using her names and pronouns and all that stuff. And honestly, it's been really hard because my parents give me crap for it all the time. I even make it a point to go visit her every so often, even though the rest of the family haven't seen her since last year. I also have promised her that if I ever get married, she would be invited to the wedding no matter what my family thinks. So me and my fiance got engaged a while back and my parents absolutely adore this guy, especially my dad. And ever since my sister came out, they almost see him as a substitute son. And as a result, he's taken my parents' side on the whole situation with my sister and he even expressed that he doesn't really like her all that much. After the proposal, which was extremely elaborate and surprisingly orchestrated by my parents, my parents, who are also wedding planners, started talking about the big day and offered to pay for everything. I mentioned wanting to invite my sister and they shut down the idea immediately. They said that she disrespected the family and cut them off and all that. So they basically gave me this ultimatum. Have my wedding planned and paid for by them or have my sister there and they won't come at all. Dude, what kind of parents give their kid this kind of ultimatum? I'm sorry for cutting in, but I'm pissed. I took my parents' offer because honestly, I can't afford to pay for an entire wedding. Why were you trying to get married in the first place if you can't afford a wedding, like for real though? My fiance was also pressuring me to take the deal. I recently broke the news to my sister and she's very understandably upset. I feel so guilty about all of this. So am I the a-hole? Uh, yeah, you are. You're definitely the a-hole. You literally made your sister a promise that if you got married, you would invite her no matter how the family felt. And then for her to go and break the promise as soon as money is involved, a-hole behavior. Honestly, the whole family is 10 out of 10 a-holes. I cannot stand any of them. And the fiance definitely, definitely fits right in. So you guys, let me know what you think about this messy situation in the comments, but honestly, I don't like any of them. And if I was the sister, I wouldn't want to go to the wedding anyways. Okay guys, oh, that one really pissed me off. Okay, so story number two is called, am I the a-hole for telling my daughter that she cannot introduce her black boyfriend to her grandparents? My daughter Anna has recently started to date an African-American man named Jamal. While I'm not exactly what you would refer to as a liberal, he's still a nice guy. And if my daughter's happy, I'm happy. Why did that sound like low-key racist though. Hmm. The problem is Anna is really naive about the community that we live in. Although her friends are okay with seeing her in a relationship like this, it has definitely caused a ton of gossip in the town. And now people are starting to voice their concerns to me. What kind of backwoods sound are these people from? Of course, every time they say something, I set them straight, but I'm still painfully aware of how this looks to other people. So my parents are coming into town this week and Anna expressed desire to want to introduce them to Jamal. She said things are starting to get serious and she thinks he's the one. I told her no way in hell was that gonna happen. I don't have a problem with Jamal, but my parents absolutely will. And even when the relationship ends, they'll never let it go. Wait, when the relationship ends? What the f To be honest, they might cut her off completely. Now Anna is calling me racist for defending my parents. So she's currently staying with Jamal and refusing to talk to me. My wife is standing by me because she knows how my parents can be. I mean, they even had a problem with my wife for years just because of the length of skirt that she wore on the day that she met them. But my friends are saying that I need to focus more on my daughter than pleasing my parents. So am I the a-hole? Yeah, yeah, you're the a-hole. Like, I get it. OP is trying to keep the peace, I guess. 
I'm gonna assume that they were trying to protect Jamal from a potentially hostile and uncomfortable situation for him. But at the end of the day, the reason why OP is still the a-hole to me is because they shouldn't be so concerned about their parents' racist and outdated views. For me, if my parents were gonna disown me or my kids over who they chose to date, just because of their race, I would literally be disowning them. No questions asked. So although I know that OP was trying to keep the peace, I'm still gonna have to give him a eight out of 10 a whole rating. I mean, I guess they could give the grandparents a heads up about Jamal before they get there. But honestly, if they even had a problem with it, I wouldn't want them at my house anyways. So you guys let me know what you think about this situation in the comments. And here is the last crazy story, guys. Am I the a-hole for refusing to meet my biological daughter? Many years ago, I was married to a man named Mark. A few years into our marriage, I found out that he was cheating on me and he got another girl pregnant. This was a huge blow because I too was pregnant with his child. I was only nine weeks pregnant and I was determined to abort the child and divorce him. He begged me to reconsider and insisted that I give our relationship a second chance. So I did, albeit reluctant. I had a very miserable pregnancy and I learned six months in that he had never stopped seeing the other woman. He told me that he was torn and that he was in love with both of us. I wasn't willing to tolerate any of that bullcrap so I moved out and filed for a divorce. I wanted him out of my life but being pregnant with his child made things difficult. I never bonded with the baby and the baby being his offspring really contributed to my dislike for it. I told him that I didn't want the baby and when he married the other woman, I told her that she had the option to adopt it. And she did. And with that, I signed over my parental rights as soon as the baby turned six months. But I left the day she was born. When I left, I told Mark that I didn't want anything to do with the girl and that his wife was free to be her mother. Then I moved to another country and tried to leave that part of my life behind. I met a wonderful man and we got married. And I told him all about my past. And now we have three wonderful kids who are nine, five, and two. Recently, Mark contacted me out of the blue saying that my daughter, who's now 14 years old, wants to meet me. Apparently, his wife had died. And before she passed, she had confessed that she wasn't her biological mother. I'm torn because I really don't want to meet this kid. It was extremely difficult for me to leave that part of my life behind. I was literally depressed for years. I reminded him that I gave up my parental rights years ago and I didn't want anything to do with either one of them. I mean, I had planned on eventually telling my kids about their older sibling, but no time soon. I mean, they're still little. I told him to never contact me again and then I hung up the phone. So am I the a-hole? Dang. This one... Uh, even hearing it a year later, this one is still tough for me. Like right off the bat, I want to say that OP clearly isn't the a-hole because how could she be? She signed up for her parental rights. She didn't want anything to do with that baby and I completely understand why. But then the other part of me, probably the empath part of me, just feel so bad for that girl. Because although the dad is a scumbag for cheating and leaving his wife for somebody else, the daughter didn't do anything to deserve this life. And honestly, I feel really bad for her because she just recently lost somebody that she thought was her mother. And now her own mother is saying that she wants nothing to do with her. So I can only imagine how that's gonna affect this poor girl. So that's the only thing that I can honestly think about in this situation. So although I understand OP's point, I'm the kind of person that would push it aside for a kid, especially my kid, but that's just me. And who says that her kids have to know about their sister right now anyways? She can still wait to introduce them until they're older. I don't know. I don't know. I can't blame OP. I can't give a-hole ratings to anybody but the father who is a 10 out of 10. He's a scumbag and I hate him. You have to let me know what you think about these people in the comments. Anyways, guys, that's the top three stories that I've read this year and they're really dramatic. I know. These stories actually make me lose a little bit of faith in humanity. I'm not even gonna lie. Also, besties, I wanted to show you the final results to my skull container. This one took me literally forever to make because the design is so intricate and it's actually a pain in the butt to try and put the resin into all of the little nooks and crannies. But guys, it was so worth it. This is literally my new favorite mold. I wish I had more molds in this style because this one was so much fun to work with and I am obsessed with the final results. Once I put these red lights in there, I was kind of regretting not putting lights in there to begin with. So anyways, you guys gotta let me know what you think about the final results to this container. And if you made it all the way to the end of the video, drop some red and black emojis in the comments to show me that you're a true supporter. All right, besties, I love your faces. Thank you so, so much for watching. And as usual, stay kind, stay amazing, stay drama free, and keep on resonating. Peace.